Welcome back to the round table, Master Kavat. My name is Tom. Queer baiting. To practice to hint at, but then not to actually depict, a same-sex romantic relationship between characters in a work of fiction, mainly in film or television. This is done for the purpose of attracting a queer audience with the ultimate, unrealized suggestion of relationships that appeal to them. Voltron Legendary Defender, a Netflix original series and latest reboot in the ongoing franchise, focusing on a group of space pilots, their magic robot lions, and their adventures in space. The hot topic today is whether or not Voltron Tron Legendary Defender is guilty of queer baiting, which from my perspective, I'd say, yep. This past Friday, August 10th, 2018, Voltron dropped its seventh season, comprised of 13 episodes. Off the heels of an insane sixth season, and going into its final 26 episodes, a lot of people were excited to see what happens next. But that excitement was only escalated last month at San Diego Comic Con, where at their annual Voltron panel, it was established that one of the main characters, Shiro, was indeed gay. They had had a boyfriend back on Earth named Adam. It was said that Adam and Shiro were engaged, but had a falling out just before Shiro went into space, and in season 7, viewers would be seeing more of Adam. What was heavily implied in order to hype up the upcoming season was that there would be flat out representation of an on-screen LGBT relationship in the show, however, that isn't exactly what happened. Now, spoiler warning for plot happenings in Voltron Season 7. Click off now if you're not yet caught up and avoid having it all ruined for you. Okay, so we get sparse flashbacks here and there of Shira and Adam, as the plot accumulates to our paladins riding back on Earth, only for our heroes, and by extension, the audience to discover that the Gaara invaded, with Adam being one of the victims killed in the attack. Shiro doesn't even mourn all too much. We get a few seconds of sad face and we move on. As a result, fans aren't happy since this is nothing in comparison to what the press campaign for this season led them to believe they would be seeing. This is nothing revolutionary and pretty akin to past examples of LGBT relationship in media where there was hardly any focus or even confirmation of that representation being present. Understandably, it can be very difficult for creators to put LGBT rep in their shows because of censors and international distribution. However, the fact that a central part of the promotion for the season was the promise of an LGBT relationship seemed to only exist to get queer audiences to invest with the hopes of being represented only to be let down with a half-baked portrayal. Many fans have been divided on this portrayal. On one side, because we got to see very little of Shiro's past relationship with Adam and lack of a reunion for his untimely demise, despite the aforementioned marketing, this is viewed as queer baiting. But the other side has made the argument that Adam wasn't the representation. Shiro is. That even with Adam deceased, Shiro is still a gay man in the show's canon. Losing a poor partner doesn't suddenly make Shiro straight. And while that sentiment is true, I personally would have to disagree in relation to Adam not being the representation. Side character or not, just as how Shiro is a gay man, so was Adam. Broken up or not, they're both the representation. Their relationship was a part of the LGBT representation. By stating Shiro alone is representation, I feel as if people are downplaying the significance of it as a whole. They may be looking at it from the bright side, but it does come off as a little bit dismissive. But the showrunners also weighed in on how they saw Adam fitting into the overarching narrative of the show, in this quote from an interview with Polygon. Shiro did give up this relationship with this amazing man to go pursue his career when everything was kind of comfortable and innocent. I think when real tragedy strikes, it kind of snaps things into sharp focus, and you start to realize how much Shiro may have taken Adam for granted and how much he didn't appreciate him when he could have. If you look at Adam on the whole in regards to Earth campaign, there's a huge battle that happens. Adam represents the loss that our characters feel with what Earth is going through in battling with the Galra. The showrunners weren't the only part of the crew that gave their input. Pitch's voice actress, Bex Taylor Claus, also chimed in, addressing the controversy directly. Just because you're sad about an outcome doesn't mean it's problematic. Be nice, and enjoy the artistry the incomparable creators have bestowed upon us. Season 7 is about war about the casualties that have mass when a world is locked in anger. It's not just a silly kid show about space cats. It's so much deeper, so much darker. It's raw and real regardless of its fantastical setting. I understand where you're coming from, but I don't view it as queer baiting. Just because it's not a happy ending doesn't make it less of a representation. Sure, it'd be great to give Shiro a win, but that's not how war works. 
Dear Voltron fans, please just be kind. Regardless of what happens in the show, just be kind. To each other, to creators, to performers. I'm tired of threats. I'm tired of having to consider canceling con appearances due to safety concerns. I'm just tired. Sadness and disappointment are valid. You can always express discontent, as long as it's not targeted harassment. That is where the problem lies. She also retweeted a fan who stated, I disagree entirely that it was queer bait. They told us it was a past relationship for Shiro, the main character, who is the LGBT plus rep. Adam was a plot device to get Shiro out of the 2D closet. The executive producers never pretended he was more. Fans who built up Adam and Chatham baited themselves. The thing is, this is part of the issue people are taking with how this relationship was portrayed. While there are multiple heterosexual relationships that come to fruition, over the course of the season, Adam and Shiro are the only ones who seem to have a tragic ending. What some feel is this gives the message that gay love stories are often going to end tragically. In addition to this, the fact that Adam was killed off so quickly makes it seem as though the show wanted to get points for having gay representation without actually having to write it beyond a few short scenes that establish it. In my eyes, the queer baiting doesn't come from the way it was written, but the way it was promoted. Yes, it's true that Shiro and Adam's relationship was in the past. Yes, it's true they broke up. Yes, his death was written to show the cold reality of war. But from where I stand, that wasn't the queer baiting. The way it was marketed was the queer baiting. The official Voltron Twitter flat out stated, Laura Montgomery says you will meet Adam, Shiro's significant other in season seven. Not ex-boyfriend, not ex-fiance, not even of how much to expect from him, just that he's Shiro's significant other. That alone implies a lot. While you can fault fans for making assumptions, which is valid, how else are they going to interpret the revelation of a brand new character that accompanies Shiro's sexuality, saying we as an audience are going to meet him? It's completely justified fans are upset about it. The vagueness of it all lets fans assume that we would at least witness Shiro and Adam reunite in present day. And again, by lack of specifying the fact they're broken up in marketing and hiding his death, just referring to him as Shiro's significant other, you are giving fans the impression there's room to get back together. That there's a future for Adam. This is like if a Spider-Man reboot promoted the hell out of Uncle Ben. I pick him up as Peter's caretaker, mentor. This guy is the bee's knees. Only for us to walk in and see Uncle Ben get gunned down five minutes into the damn thing. Or if McDonald's brought back a dipping sauce through the high demand. Only for it to be one day only. And also if they sent like three packets of stores 50 miles apart from each other. Oh wait, they actually did that. As much as this is another tired execution of LGBT rap and media, I don't think anyone should be attacking the staff of the show. Especially considering the fact that we don't know what went down behind the scenes, what intentions really were, or the true feelings of every person who works on Voltron Legendary Defender. This discussion needs to happen though, and dismissing or inciting hostility towards the LGBT fan base of the show for the fact that they feel misled or harassing the staff of the show, who may have had no real influence over how this relationship would be portrayed, are two avenues that should be avoided. What should be focused on is the fact that normalizing LGBT people and relationships through animation is important and should be a priority, and when done right, it makes a genuine difference in making the world a more tolerant and accepting place. Well, I believe they always intended for Shiro to be gay. My only real fear is if the inclusion of Adam was done in response to rabid shippers who were sparked controversy in the fandom's past. While the budding romance between Lance and Allure was something the show has been building up for a while and got a bigger focus in this season, it does feel a bit forced that the narrative is suddenly setting up Keith and Axa too. Hmm. We know it takes up to nine months to a year to produce an episode of a cartoon. We know May 2017 saw a huge controversy where a fan tried to blackmail the studio to get their ship, Clamps, Keith and Lance, canon. And now going to this final production season, Shiro suddenly has a lover we just now find out about, Lance and Allure is closer than ever, and Keith gets an out of nowhere relationship. I'm not saying this is 100% the writers addressing and avoiding shippers by pairing everyone off with different people, especially those who are always thought to be LGBT representatives, leaving their only intended romance from day one of Lance and Allure for the taking, but it is suspicious. Especially when you factor in that Pidge and Hunk aren't given any romantic interest. And from my observations of the fandom, they've been shipped the least. And when they are, it's usually with each other. If this is the case, your piece of work should never have that grave an influence from fans where you have to throw people together just to avoid pissing people off. Because surprise, you still piss people off. Have y'all motherhuggers learned nothing from Twilight? <sighs> 
I need a mimosa and some Teddy Grahams. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think this was queer baiting? Why or why not? Tell us in the comments below or tweet to me at TommyPQM or me at Alfred Vods. And join the conversation at Roundtable Vids on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you want to help the Roundtable grow, support us on Patreon. Get access to exclusive perks and be featured at the end of the video like all these wonderful people. Link in the description. Don't forget to like this video, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss a video. I've been Tom. I've been Ostrich Vots. This is your daily dose of cartoon news, and we'll see you guys next time. I want a mimosa!